If we say The Lord of the Rings is the representative work of the Western Four Great Classics, then this film is undoubtedly the unprecedented pinnacle of Indian cinema. Patiently watching this episode will definitely refresh your visual senses. As every shot and scene design is filled with exceptionally high artistic achievement, it combines the grandeur of an epic with the intense portrayal of love. And every frame is as beautiful as a fairyland. I will take you on an immersive journey to experience this epic masterpiece. The story begins when an old woman with a small baby falls into a fast-flowing river. Her body is swiftly carried by the rushing river towards the deep water area. A small branch gives the woman a glimmer of hope, and she struggles to hold onto it to stabilize herself. She waits for 10 hours, but no one comes to rescue her. The water level gradually rises, and she is about to be completely submerged. Knowing that she has no chance of survival, she looks up to the towering waterfall and prays to Shivagami. If death is the only redemption, she wishes for the Reaper to take her away in exchange for the child's safety. With one hand, she places the crying baby on her head and keeps it above the water as the water level covers her head. She continues to hold the child above the water's surface with all her strength, even as her body stiffens. Finally, when the first rays of sunlight shine on the baby in the early morning, the sound of crying attracts the attention of the surrounding villagers. Everyone is shocked when they see the scene. Until the baby was safely rescued by the man, the old woman's body gradually went limp and drifted into the distance with the fast-flowing river. From the man's words, they learned that the old woman was dressed like a queen, a childless couple against the advice of others, decides to adopt the baby and names him Shiva. As time flows like a waterfall, Shiva grows up gradually. Unlike his peers, he always gazes at the waterfall. Shiva yearns for the day when he can climb to the top of the waterfall, firmly believing that there is another world above the waterfall. Shiva's mother scares him with tales of demons devouring people to discourage his thoughts. When his parents are not at home, Curious Shiva always secretly comes to the bottom of the waterfall to climb. Even though he is scolded by his mother and dragged home by the ear every time he is discovered, Shiva never gives up his yearning for the world in his heart. Day after day, Shiva's rock climbing skills improve, and time flies. He is no longer an ignorant teenager, he easily climbs the slippery rock walls and enjoys bathing in the waterfall, never tiring of it. Today, Shiva is about to face a new challenge. He wants to jump across a 20-meter waterfall cliff to the other side. With a firm grasp of a tree branch, Shiva jumps skillfully and flies across. Even though he slips and falls from above multiple times, he still doesn't choose to give up. Because of Shiva's dangerous behavior, which deeply worries his foster mother, she invites a village priest to perform a ritual to change Shiva through magic. The priest tells her that if they pour a thousand barrels of water into the sacred artifact, Shivagami will guide Shiva towards the right path. To prevent his mother from suffering, Shiva makes a surprising move that astonishes everyone present. With his strong shoulders, he lifts a one-ton lingam, and the villagers admire his robust physique. Shiva carries the lingam and jumps into the water with a light and majestic demeanor. He places the lingam below the waterfall and baptizes it with the continuous flow of water. Until one day, a wooden mask washed down from the waterfall, which convinced Shiva that there was another world above the waterfall. It is because of this mask that Shiva encounters a significant change in his life trajectory. Shiva placed the mask on the sand and miraculously recreated the face of an unparalleled beauty. He used a tree branch to add long hair to the face, creating the image of a beautiful celestial maiden that captivated his heart. Deep within, Shiva felt a spiritual call from above the waterfall. After being single for 20 years, he made the decision to climb the waterfall and explore the unknown. A gracefully dancing and enchanting beauty appeared before Shiva, singing and smiling at him. He was mesmerized by the girl before him. Under the enormous temptation, Shiva unleashed a tremendous power. With an unwavering spirit, he leaped towards the beautiful girl. Shiva successfully crossed the challenge of jumping to the other side, a feat he had never achieved before. But just as Shiva grabbed hold of a tree branch, the image of the fairy vanished without a trace. Undeterred, Shiva followed the fairy's footsteps and arrived beneath the waterfall. The fairy smiled back at Shiva and led him to climb higher. Encouraged by her presence, he reached new heights. They exchanged loving glances as they chased each other amidst the waterfalls. Shiva felt like he was traversing a dreamland, falling deeply in love. He swiftly moved through the forest using the vines of a large tree. With boundless courage and spirit, 
He overcame every obstacle in his path. Although Shiva had always loved climbing waterfalls since childhood, he had never reached the summit. This time, with the inspiration of the fairy, he ascended to unprecedented heights. Using the tree vines, Shiva crafted a rope and a bow and arrow, with a mighty leap. He pulled the bowstring taut and released an arrow. With perseverance, Shiva finally reached the top of the waterfall he had always dreamed of. As he reached out to touch the fairy, she suddenly transformed into butterfly and disappeared before his eyes. Shiva ventured through the unfamiliar surroundings, searching for the fairy. Suddenly, a woman being pursued by soldiers came into his view, with a group of officials wielding large swords closely behind. Shiva followed to find out what was going on. The woman led the soldiers to an open marshland. <laughs> Unbeknownst to them, it was an ambush set by the woman's tribe. Hidden in the trees, her comrades systematically eliminated the pursuers. The woman, who had appeared beautiful just moments ago, swiftly attacked without mercy. Shiva, hidden from behind, became enamored with her gallant fighting stance. When the woman was about to end her enemy's life, she inadvertently realized that the clan's wrist was worn around his neck. Through interrogation, they learned that one of the women had infiltrated their palace with the intention of rescuing a woman named Devasena. The woman's mission had failed, and she was killed by their forces. Before he could finish his sentence, the woman angrily cut off his head. She ordered her followers to burn the man's body, leaving no trace behind. Shiva continued to follow them until they reached a cave. The woman told the chief about the death of her companions. From their conversation, Shiva learned that the woman's name was Avantika. This group is made up of the remnants of the destroyed Kunthala kingdom. Previously, Shiva had found Avantika's lost mask in the waterfall. From their conversation, Shiva discovered that the queen of their kingdom, Devasena, had been imprisoned for 30 years in Mahishmati kingdom. During those 30 years, the queen had been treated like an animal by the ruler of Mahishmati. The glory of the Kunthala kingdom had been tarnished, and they replaced tears with anger. They vowed to rescue Queen Devasena as long as they had breath. However, they needed the help of another person, General Katapa, from the armory of the Mahishmati kingdom. He is a powerful warrior and was once the queen's personal guard. Since Queen Queen's imprisonment, he had been serving as a slave in the Mahishmati kingdom. They were about to encounter a perfect opportunity. The Mahishmati kingdom was preparing to celebrate the birthday of their king, Balala Deva. It would be the best time to rescue the queen, and Shiva is about to follow them on the path of no return in the kingdom of Mahishmati. Avantika lay by the lake, extending her injured hand into the water, and a group of blue little fish swam over to clean her wound. The therapy of the fish brought immense enjoyment to Avantika and relieved all her fatigue until she fell into a deep sleep. But Avantika didn't know that a strange man was swimming under the lake. He took out a paintbrush and gently drew patterns on the woman's hand. But when Avantika woke up, she saw nothing. Avantika was a warrior in her tribe, and today the chief entrusted her with a mission to defend their honor. Just as the chief was about to place the regulations on Avantika and assign the task, he noticed the patterns on her arm and scolded her for prioritizing appearance over her vows. Unaware of the situation, Avantika felt frustrated, just as the chief was about to take back the mission and give the opportunity to someone else. Avantika grabbed the chief and shed a tear on his hand. The patterns almost caused Avantika to lose her eligibility for the expedition. Before heading out, Avantika returned to the lakeside to find the mysterious man responsible for the prank. Avantika had her companion dress up as her and lie by the lake, while she waited in a tree nearby with her bow and arrow ready for the man's appearance. Just as Avantika focused her attention on the lake, Shiva silently appeared behind her. Shiva placed a green snake on Avantika's shoulder while she dared not make a move. Then, Shiva quietly took out a paintbrush and tattooed her body. Avantika, still unaware of this, lured the snake to the arrow by tapping her finger to make a sound and then sent the green snake away with an arrow. When Avantika turned around to inspect her surroundings, the man had already disappeared. Avantika didn't wait for the mysterious man to appear so she prepared to go back. With her companion's reminder, Avantika finally noticed another tattoo on her arm. Avantika was furious and followed Shiva's footsteps to a snowy area, shooting an arrow. Fortunately, Shiva was agile enough to evade the fatal blow. Shiva set up a trap with branches and hid, waiting for Avantika to arrive. Avantika arrives in a fury and falls for Shiva's trick. Just as Shiva gloated and approached to inspect, Avantika held him at sword point from behind. Avantika stabbed Shiva's heart with the sword, leaving a trace of blood, facing the woman he loved. 
Shiva didn't care at all and even wore a smile on his face. Shiva told Avantika that he came for the woman behind the mask. Rage surged within Avantika, and she didn't believe Shiva's nonsense. In their fight, they grappled and tumbled down the snowy mountain. Avantika stood up with all her strength, drew her sword, and was about to strike Shiva. Shiva swiftly flipped backward, disarmed Avantika of her armor, and then turned around to unfasten her top. Avantika's figure fascinated Shiva, even making him forget the pain in his shoulder. When Avantika launched another attack, Shiva skillfully untied her hair, using his extraordinary abilities and love. Shiva dissolved Avantika's anger, Shiva embraced Avantika's waist and washed his face under the waterfall. Then, Shiva grabbed a handful of fruit, crushed it, and applied it to Avantika's lips. With his black finger, he lightly applied eyeliner to Avantika. Shiva deliberately cut his hand and used the blood to dot Avantika's brow. Finally, Shiva pulled down Avantika's tightly wrapped skirt and turned it into a sexy half-skirt. Under the tranquil waterfall, Avantika was amazed by her own beauty. She had never seen herself so captivating and enchanting. When Avantika turned to look at the man, Shiva had already pulled out the mask she had lost. Proving everything, the fierce Avantika had transformed into a gentle and loving woman under the nourishment of love. They fell in love and couldn't help but embrace each other, dancing a traditional Indian dance. Knowing that she carried a heavy responsibility and didn't want to bring danger to Shiva, Avantika plucked a poisonous flower and used it to make Shiva faint. Avantika embarked on her expedition alone to the kingdom of Mahishmati to save the queen. On the way, Avantika fell into an ambush by the soldiers. Just as the leader questioned Avantika's purpose and prepared to search her, a powerful hand grabbed the soldier's throat from behind. Shiva instructed Avantika to hide behind him, and as the soldiers approached, Shiva forcefully pulled one of them off his horse. He pushed the black horse hard and directly overpowered the entire line of men. In no time, Shiva decimated the remaining enemies, leaving only one soldier slowly approaching with wide eyes. The soldier murmured an unfamiliar name under his breath. As the soldier neared, he knelt before Shiva, begging for forgiveness. Just as Shiva was bewildered by the situation, a large number of enemies appeared in the distance. Chasing after them, they were forced onto a steep snowy slope with no way to escape. Unfortunately, Avantika fell victim to a long-range attack and was unable to get up from the snow. In the midst of the crisis, Shiva exerted all his strength to topple a massive boulder. <laughs> causing a violent tremor that unexpectedly triggered an avalanche. Using his bare hands, Shiva broke off a piece of tree bark and quickly placed Avantika on it, using it as a makeshift snowboard to swiftly escape the disaster. The avalanche was much faster than their snowboarding speed, and they raced against death, swiftly maneuvering through the snowy mountains. At a cliff, they successfully leaped to the other side, narrowly escaping the calamity. Avantika revealed her mission to Shiva, and he insisted that her mission was also his responsibility and task. Shiva took over Avantika's mission and made the decision to bear all responsibilities on her behalf. He is the strongest man in the country. To showcase his authority and strength, he decided to challenge a fierce bull in front of everyone today. With a furious roar, he grabbed the bull's horns and with his mortal body, withstood the bull's deadly strike. Then, he held his breath and grabbed the bull's nose forcefully overpowering the bull and bringing it down to the ground. This feat won the praise and cheers of everyone present. However, the bull, unwilling to accept defeat, broke free from its restraints and charged at him once again. Seeing this, a close guard immediately tried to stop the bull with a sword, but he was unexpectedly thrown aside by the bull. The man who just reacted just turned around and smiled evilly and immediately jumped up with his hammer in both hands and killed the bull with a single blow. It turns out he is Balaladeva the king of the Mahishmati kingdom. Under his strong rule, the Mahishmati kingdom thrived and prospered, but behind the scenes, it was a place of suffering and misery. Every month, the common people in the kingdom were forced to pay tribute, and those who couldn't afford it would be whipped and turned into slaves. In addition, the tyrannical king would torture his captive sister-in-law, who had been imprisoned for 30 years. In the public square every day, Katapa looks down in guilt. When facing the hostile bull, Katapa, without caring for his own life, bravely protected the king. Upon witnessing Katapa's unwavering loyalty, 
King Balaladeva decided to reward him, Katapa only hoped that the king would show mercy to the woman in the square and set her free. However, in anger, King Balaladeva handed him a sword and told him that death would be the best release for the woman. Katapa had been loyal to the previous king, whose throne was usurped by Balaladeva 25 years ago. The woman in question was Queen Devasena, the wife of the former king. As a royal guard, Katapa had always been devoted to Queen Devasena, and even as a slave, his loyalty to the previous king remained unchanged. During her 30 years of captivity, Queen Devasena had been focused on one thing she would pick up tree branches from the ground every day and place them in a pit. No one knew what she intended to do with this action. At night, Katapa came to the square with the intention of secretly setting Queen Devasena free, but she firmly believed that her son would come to rescue her. The next day, Queen Devasena's son, Shiva, arrived outside the Mahishmati kingdom on a fast horse. Shiva leapt from his horse into the water and swam under the city wall and with a light and skillful leap, he crossed the wall and entered the palace. In the square, Queen Devasena looked up at the sky and smiled, as if she sensed that the time had come. Today, the entire nation would celebrate King Balaladeva's birthday with all their might. He spared no expense in ordering the creation of a huge golden statue of himself. In the grand square, people sang and danced with great enthusiasm. Numerous slaves exerted all their strength to pull the ropes and try to erect the golden statue. The onlookers were commanded to cheer loudly at the moment when the golden statue was raised. Shiva, wearing a veil, mingled with the crowd and also arrived at the square. Just as the golden statue was about to be erected, an elderly slave exhaustedly collapsed, causing a chain reaction and many others fell as well. The remaining slaves tried desperately to pull back, but they were completely overwhelmed. The statue quickly tilted and would cause severe casualties once it fell. The lives of hundreds of people were hanging by a thread. King Balaladeva and his father, however, were indifferent, thinking that casualties among a few slaves were inevitable for a hundred-foot-tall golden statue. At the critical moment, a sturdy figure grabbed the rope and, with his own strength, stabilized the massive golden statue. All the slaves expressed their gratitude to him. Even the fallen slaves struggled to get up. Everyone joined forces to pull the statue back upright. Just then a gust of wind blew away the veil covering the man's face, and the old slaves were shocked by the man's face. This man looks very much like their old king. All the slaves began to call out the name of the old king, Bahubali. Even when they were whipped by the soldiers, even the onlookers shouted the name in an impassioned voice. Queen Devasena in the center of the square, looked up at the sound of her voice, a smile in her eyes that had not been seen for a long time. After 25 years, her husband was still remembered by the people. To cover up the awkwardness, the band began playing music, the golden statue was finally erected with the relentless efforts of the slaves. But King Balaladeva, standing high above, could no longer feel the joy, he was consumed by a mix of fear, unease, and burning anger, in the eyes of the people. The golden statue was erected more for that man. That night, King Balaladeva summoned all the guards to the palace for interrogation. He angrily questioned them about who started the chants of Bahubali. Amidst the silence and fear, one brave individual in the group stepped forward. Instead of speaking, he knocked over a nearby brazier and quickly fled the scene. That familiar look made King Balaladeva seem to see Bahubali's figure. Balaladeva immediately ordered the gates of the city to be sealed to catch this man alive. Shiva leapt down from the promenade to the square of all folks, followed by a large number of his pursuers. The imprisoned Queen Devasena became elated as she realized that her long-awaited son had come to rescue her after 25 years. Shiva swiftly reached Devasena's side, but there was no time to remove her shackles. Shiva picks up the chain and puts down all the guards in front of him. At that moment, Shiva was unaware that the woman before him was his own biological mother, he was merely helping Avantika in her mission to rescue her. Shiva lifted Queen Devasena onto a carriage and quickly headed towards the main gate. Prince Padrudu instructed General Katapa to capture the person alive, while he led a team to set up an ambush outside the city. 
Katapa immediately sounded the alarm. The guards, upon hearing the alarm, lit hay bales to block the city gates. However, the fiery obstacle could not stop Shiva's relentless progress. But Drudu had already set up an ambush outside the city gates, awaiting Shiva's arrival. As Shiva approached, but Drudu gave the order to knock him down into the mud pool. Soldiers hiding in the darkness quickly surrounded and struck Shiva, rendering him unconscious in the muddy water. When Shiva regained consciousness, blood covered his face. Both Queen Devasena and he were under Badrudu's control. Looking up, Shiva saw Badrudu humiliating Queen Devasena. An unfamiliar woman made Shiva feel an inexplicable closeness. Enraged, Shiva roared in an attempt to break free, but he was stabbed from behind. Furious, Shiva grabbed his attacker's leg and threw him forcefully into a tree. With a swift backhand slap, Shiva knocked down the soldiers behind him. He stepped on an enemy soldier's neck, producing a crisp sound, then flung several soldiers away with his feet. But Drudu, who was hiding in the shadows, tried to sneak up from behind Shiva, but was unable to do so as Shiva claimed his throat. Katapa arrives and saves Badrudu. Shiva and the general engaged in a fierce battle, evenly matched. At that moment the remnants of Kunthala's kingdom arrived to support them, and they saw that Princess Devasena had been rescued. Both sides formed a chaotic melee, clashing together. Shiva's morale soared as he seized Katapa's sword and beheaded Badrudu. Everyone present was astonished by the sight. In an instant, thunder and lightning filled the sky. Accompanied by a fierce storm, Katapa decisively dropped his weapon and ordered his subordinates to prepare a deadly weapon, intending to avenge Prince Badrudu with a thunderous strike. Raindrops pounded Shiva's face as he abruptly turned. Shaking off the dirt on his face, Katapa rushed forward and, upon seeing Shiva's face clearly, displayed a look of astonishment. He immediately dropped his weapon and knelt before Shiva. Oh, buddy. Upon hearing that name, everyone present also knelt down. Shiva, bewildered, stood frozen in place. Katapa lifted one of Shiva's feet and placed it on top of his head, an act that signaled eternal allegiance just as he had done when he was a baby. Shiva has no idea about his life and suddenly he is being worshipped as a god by so many people. Katapa told Shiva all about it. It turned out that from a young age, Shiva was crowned as the king of the Mahishmati kingdom by his grandmother. However, during a rebellion, his grandmother was shot with several arrows and forced to flee into the river, sacrificing her life to ensure Shiva's safety. Shiva was rescued and raised by the people of a village. And it all started with this rebellion. After Shiva's grandfather passed away, Queen Sivagami assumed the role of regent. She was incredibly intelligent and governed the kingdom efficiently. However, no one was willing to accept a woman as their ruler. Soon, Sivagami's brother plotted a rebellion to claim the throne. Queen Sivagami arrives with Shiva's father Bahubali in her arms. At that moment, only a few individuals stood up. But it was within Queen Sivagami's expectations. Katapa, with his formidable strength and unwavering loyalty, single-handedly protected the members of the royal family. The rebel leader ordered his guards to surround Katapa, unaware that they had already been bribed by Queen Sivagami. In his anger, he grabbed his sword and charged at Empress Sivagami, but the Empress killed him with a backhanded slash. From this moment onwards, Sivagami was in control, since Bahubali had lost his parents at a young age. 
Queen Sivagami decided to raise him alongside her own child, Balala Deva. Under the care of Queen Sivagami, Bahubali and Balala Deva grew up together, however, they gradually revealed their contrasting personalities. Bahubali was kind, generous, and empathetic towards the people, he often mingled with the lower classes and slaves, winning their hearts. Queen Sivagami treated him as her own son, with fairness and impartiality. On the other hand, Balala Deva displayed exceptional martial prowess and strategic intelligence, but he lacked compassion for the people, he was ruthless and indifferent to their suffering. Both were equally skilled in arts and warfare, Queen Sivagami struggled to decide who should be crowned as the king and decided to create a challenging contest to determine the rightful heir. Before she can make a decision, Empress Sivagami faces a new crisis when her trusted advisor, Sakatudu, sneaks into the palace and steals military secrets. To prevent the leak of classified information, Queen Sivagami sent the two princes to capture Sakatudu in a neighboring country. When the princes cornered Sakatudu on a cliff, he sent the military secrets to the enemy using a carrier pigeon, but Hubley did not intend to give Sakatudu a chance to kill himself and jumped down to catch him. However, Balala Deva, driven by his wicked intentions, decided to release the rope, intending to let Sakatudu fall to his death. Luckily, the knot got stuck in the rock and didn't fall. Bahubali even smiled a trustworthy smile, just as Balala Deva was about to come forward to cut the rope. Katapa arrived late with a group of guards. In order not to reveal his sinister side Balala Deva had to pull Bahubali up again. Under Katapa's interrogation, they learned that Sakatudu had already sold the secrets to the king of Chalkias. These barbarians, once they breached the kingdom, would massacre innocent people. Furthermore, their army numbered in the hundreds of thousands, while the Mahishmani kingdom had only 25,000 soldiers. Soon, the king of Chalkias led his massive army of 100,000 soldiers to the borders of the Mahishmani kingdom, heralding an imminent and epic battle. Queen Sivagami, accompanied by her two princes, discusses in her tent how to face the enemy. Prince Bihubali boldly suggests using the Trident strategy, a tactic only recorded in books but never employed before. After unanimous deliberation, Queen Sivagami accepts this decision. The group gathers together for a sand table simulation. Katapa will lead 5,000 soldiers in a frontal assault, forming an impenetrable wall of steel with their iron armor, shields, and spears. The two princes will lead the cavalry to flank the enemy's leader and seize his head. Bijala Deva proposes a clever plan, Whoever captures the enemy leader's head will be crowned as king. Resolving the queen's dilemma of choosing a successor, Queen Sivagami decides to evenly distribute the remaining troops between the two princes. Balala Deva's cunning father, however, secretly reallocates troops and supplies, giving all the crossbows and war chariots to Balala Deva. The battle begins and the entire force with its excellent equipment is already under the city walls. A symbolic statue of Shivagami is also brought to the battlefield. People rally conducting pre-war mobilization to boost morale. Before the fighting begins, they perform a traditional sacrifice ritual. Balala Deva carries a great sword, ready to offer the fresh blood of a bull to Shivagami. When it was Bahubali's turn he refused to kill and Katapa told him that if he didn't sacrifice, it would lead to bad omens. Bahubali's compassionate and generous act earns cheers from everyone present. They send envoys for pre-war negotiations. Queen Sivagami is insulted by their words, and she orders the princes to capture the envoys alive and subject them to torment. The war horn sounds, and the war is about to begin. The prince's archers and crossbow carts are prepared. Katapa's ironclad spear and shield construct a wall of steel. The fierce and barbaric enemy rushes forward, sending only 30,000 elite troops, yet instilling fear in the hearts of Mahishmati's forces. Upon Balala Deva's command, 10,000 arrows rain down, decimating a significant number of the enemy's frontline soldiers. The enemy army, vast and ever-increasing, continues to charge towards our side. Bahubali ordered the use of stone throwers to throw boulders at the enemy. However, the massive stones, thrown from a distance, fail to cause any harm. It turns out to be a feint employed by Bahubali.
cleverly ties the giant stones to a massive red cloth and launches it towards the enemy's front lines. Using the catapult, the magnificent sight astonishes everyone present. The moment the red cloth hit the ground, it directly covered all the soldiers in the front line of the enemy. Panicked, the enemy forces quickly retreat, dispersing in all directions. One soldier cuts the cloth with his knife. Detecting the scent of gasoline, but it's too late, Bahubali ignites the red cloth with a flaming arrow, engulfing the enemy army in flames, causing countless casualties. Using the same method, they burn many more enemies. The intimidated enemy soldiers' morale wanes, the commanding general rallies their spirits and launches a second charge, directly attacking our forces. The trident formation is already prepared. Standing firm, Katapa constructs a shield line in the front, facing the onslaught of the hundred thousand soldiers. They attack the charging enemy with spears, but they outnumber us the many to one. Katapa knows that breaking through the defense line is only a matter of time. For now, they can only hold the line and buy more time for the princes guarding the flanks. The enemy on both sides has already reached the front line. With 25,000 soldiers against 100,000, the two princes are about to face a great test. Whoever captures the leader's head will be crowned and sit on the throne. Prince Balaladeva ordered the archers to switch to melee mode using gestures, despite the vast difference in numbers. Prince Balaladeva appeared extremely confident. He led the charge into the enemy ranks with his war hammer, engaging in close quarters combat. On the right side, Prince Bahubali wielded a hammer in his right hand and a sword in his left. Also charging into the enemy ranks, both princes displayed extraordinary bravery, striking fear into the hearts of their enemies. A fierce opponent stood before Bahubali, boasting and displaying his skills. Bahubali swiftly turned around, using the heel of his foot to flip up a spear and then leaped into the air, stepping on the enemy's head and catching the spear mid-air. Everyone near him was sent flying by Bahubali's powerful strike. Baladeva's meteor hammer was unmatched by anyone. General Katapa immediately ordered the deployment of the trident formation. The sound of horns echoed as the flags of the Mahishmani kingdom were raised. The princes engaged in battle amidst the enemy ranks and noticed the distant command. They immediately charged towards the enemy leader from both sides. Each wielding two guns, Bahubali rode on his warhorse, wielding his dual guns, and mercilessly slaughtered the enemy. The well-equipped Balaladeva, in his propeller chariot, also went straight to the The enemy, seeing their imminent defeat, resorted to treacherous tactics. They pushed Mahishmani Kingdom's captives forward as human shields. Bahubali, who had reached the front lines, immediately ordered a halt to the attack. However, Balaladeva's actions on the left side were completely different. In order to get ahead of Bahubali, he disregarded the safety of his people and continued to mow them down. Showing no mercy, the scene was gruesome and inhumane. The compassionate Bahubali devised a clever plan, instructing the soldiers to tie the hostages' legs with stone chains, forcing them to kneel on the ground. Bahubali led the charge into the enemy ranks, rescuing a young boy amidst the chaotic battle. Katapa's shield formation was fiercely assaulted by the enemy and eventually breached. With the overwhelming number of enemies, they couldn't resist. The flag of the Mahishmati kingdom was replaced by the enemy's flag. The first time they saw the enemy's banner flying on their own soil, it symbolized impending doom and death. Bahubali, observing the ominous sign from a distance, swiftly returned to the camp alone. The sign of death caused the morale to crumble, and all the soldiers began to retreat and flee. Bahubali halted them and rallied their spirits once again. Katapa raised the enemy's body to the flagpole and the enemy leader in the distance couldn't smile anymore. Bahubali led the remaining forces in another charge, wielding his spear and riding his swift horse straight into the enemy ranks towards the leader, Balaladeva. Seeing Bahubali taking the lead, 
quickly followed suit with his Reaper machine. The enemy immediately formed a human barrier, but Bahubali shattered it with a massive stone swung by a hook. Balala Diva, the first to reach the leader's position, toppled the elephant mount with his meteor hammer. The leader matched Balala Diva's strength with his own. Just as Balala Diva was on the losing end, Bahubali arrived on the scene just in time to take the enemy leader down with a fierce jump. Bahubali executed a perfect backflip, crushing his opponent's spirit. Seeing that he was losing the battle, the leader resorted to a sinister tactic by using the fallen soldiers as weapons to throw them at Bahubali. Bahubali was buried beneath a pile of bodies. When the leader thought Bahubali was immobilized, Bahubali suddenly erupted in rage. Pushing all the bodies aside, Bahubali, with the head of a golden lion in his hand, strode with a determined step towards the leader of the enemy's army, bound to take his head. The golden lion head smashed into his body, blow after blow until it finally landed directly on top of the enemy leader's head. Witnessing this scene, all the enemies started scattering and fleeing. The enemy leader was defeated, and the soldier's morale soared. Bahubali was about to take the head of the enemy leader when Balaladeva came from behind and killed him first. Balaladeva's opportunistic move was noticed by Queen Sivagami. The enemy was defeated and the battle was over. Vigiladeva excitedly raised Balaladeva's hand in the air and cheered. Queen Sivagami witnessed the entire process and made a decisive judgment. She immediately announced that Bahubali would be crowned, while Balaladeva could only become a general, providing her reasons for the decision. This decision by Queen Sivagami struck a chord with the hearts of the people. In an instant, thousands of people erupted in cheers and jubilation, raising their arms and shouting Bahubali's name. Returning to the present, Katapa tells Shiva that King Bahubali has been killed. How could Katapa, who had grown up watching Bahubali, have the heart to do this from behind? The story of Bahubali, the beginning concludes here. Tomorrow, I will continue to narrate the events of the conclusion. Shiva is about to embark on a path of vengeance and reclaim his throne.